welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the most influential progressive rock artists to emerge from the United Kingdom. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We'll be omitting Pink Floyd and the Moody Blues from this list, based largely upon the former's reputation for psychedelia and the latter's status as more of a prototype for future progressive greatness. Number 10. Van de Graaff Generator Manchester's Van de Graaff Generator may have started their careers with a psychedelic slant similar to Pink Floyd, but there's absolutely no denying the progressive roads taken by the band's later work. Specifically, Van de Graaff albums such as Porn Hearts, God Bluff and Still Life codified some of the densest and most forward-thinking prog the UK had to offer during the 70s. Frontman Peter Hamill possesses a voice unlike any of his contemporaries, a shamanistic presence that presides over the band's almost occult-sounding complexity. She was already Van de Graaff Generator may not be a good entry point for those seeking to dip their toes into UK prog, but this challenging music pays dividends for all willing to take a trip. Number 9. Gentle Giant I will make my claim. The worlds of musical nerddom tend to often flock towards artists that possess a certain cult appeal. Gentle Giant are among the most idiosyncratic of UK prog bands, a world that's already full of quirky characters. The music here takes from a wide variety of influences, from classical music to jazz, and adapts them with a musicality that's dizzying, to say the least. I didn't think it would ever happen again. Gentle Giant is a band that thrives upon creating an exciting rhythm framework for their audience, all the while adding to that foundation with wonderful melodies and challenging musicianship. The vocal approach is also mesmerizing to behold, a convoluted stew of voices that somehow come together through cacophony and indulgence to hammer home a raucous progressive meal. Number 8. Camel Progressive rock from the United Kingdom was a powerful force for musical evolution, and as a result, cast a wide net of influence for younger bands in their wake. The extreme metal band Opeth, for example, has long cited West Surrey's Camel as a huge influence, particularly when it comes to the expressive guitar playing of the latter's Andrew Latimer. Camel albums such as Mirage and The Snow Goose manage to sound musically rich while also possessing a listenability that makes them a great gateway for those seeking a UK progressive primer. But listen very carefully, my words are about to unfold. Latimer's lead guitar work on songs such as Lady Fantasy are emotionally rich and musically satisfying, a heady brew of hot licks and intellectual substance that makes Camel one of a kind. Number 7. Caravan The term Canterbury Prog is one that's not only utilised to denote Caravan's heritage within the UK, but also the style that they helped pioneer along the way. This is because a large group of bands from Canterbury just seem to possess identities all their own, careers defined by dabblings into pastoral folk, complex jazz and even absurdist humour. Caravan is a great example of all three of those things at work, since the group can just as easily pen melodic tunes such as Golf Girl as they do sidelong epics like Nine Feet Underground. I chanced upon a golf girl selling cups of tea. This is a band with its own sense of imagination and its own way of doing things, while prog rock fans in the UK were the ones who reaped the rewards. Number 6. Soft Machine. <laughs> Soft Machine was another band from Canterbury one that also emerged from the swirling mists of psychedelia to become one of the jazziest and most exciting prog acts from the UK, full stop. 
The band's revolving door membership would see legends such as Alan Holdsworth, Robert Wyatt, and Hugh Hopper contribute their immense talents to Soft Machine's improvisational sound. This was a group who thrived on the live circuit. While their studio recordings were ever-evolving affairs that combined the best of jazz, rock, and even noise to wondrous effect. Wyatt's position behind the group's drum throne was particularly immense, as was the blown-out fuzz bass of Hopper, and Mike Ratledge's envelope-pushing keyboard tones. In other words, Soft Machine was heavy stuff. Number 5. Jethro Tull Progressive rock in the United Kingdom wasn't all about poor-faced academia. Instead, the scene bore a remarkable amount of crossover fruit, with plenty of commercial appeal that endures to the modern day. Jethro Tull is a great example of this, classic rock icons that nevertheless deserve to be mentioned within the annals of prog rock royalty. It's easy the time that you worry, my friend, it's okay. This is due largely to the group's early work, from the bluesy swagger of Benefit and Aqualung to the fork-infused Heavy Horses, and the conceptual arcane headiness of Minstrel in the Gallery and a passion play. It may be difficult to separate Jethro Tull the band from singer Ian Anderson's stinging flute and captivating stage presence, but their creative footprint looms large over the entire prog scene. And you're looking elsewhere for your unselfish game. Number 4. Emerson, Lake and Palmer There have been a number of larger-than-life personalities that contributed to the UK's prog-esteemed reputation. Keith Emerson, Greg Lake and Carl Palmer most definitely qualify for this criteria, not only for their work with groups such as The Nice, but also for this impossibly influential collaboration. The band's moniker is often shortened simply to ELP, and their classic sound was one steeped in both classical music theory and Devil May Care showmanship. Emerson, for example, was known to stab his stage keyboard with knives for dramatic effect, while ELP's music discography is one that possesses a dizzying technicality. This is prog rock sharpened to that proverbial knife's edge, an attack that takes no prisoners with its execution, demanding that you get on ELP's level. Number 3. Yes. The adage that punk rock killed progressive rock in the late 70s isn't entirely true, especially when taking into account the success of artists such as Yes clear into the 1980s. However, there's also no denying that the band's early discography displays some of the clearest examples of Prog's penchant for overindulgence. Yet for every massive undertaking such as Yes, Tales from the Topographic Oceans, there are songs such as Roundabout or Heart of the Sunrise. I'll be the roundabout. The words will make you out and out. These are certified Prog killers, solid gold examples of how Yes were perhaps one of the most musically proficient groups of their day. Chris Squire's defiant bass, Bill Bruford's dizzying drumming, Steve Howe's exquisite guitar playing, and John Anderson's stratospheric vocals. This is classic Yes at their formative best. Number 2. King Crimson Is it fair to label King Crimson as the prog band for people who don't like prog? Maybe. Or perhaps it's better to label this London-based group as one of the definitive examples of a progressive spirit within music, a refusal to compromise. Robert Fripp's guitar playing is astonishingly heavy, but King Crimson was anything but a one-note act of barroom blues chords. Instead, 
The group's improvisational spirit showed their hand when it came to a jazz influence, while classical melodies assisted Crimson's songwriting as it expanded beyond prog parameters. Mellotron, flute, and atmospheric electronics would assist in establishing the sound of King Crimson, but it was their influence upon legions of artists in their wake that helped make them legends. For the court of the Crimson. Number 1. Genesis There's perhaps no progressive rock band from the UK that's achieved as much commercial success as Genesis. This is thanks not only to their early years as a blueprint for musical expressionism, but also their reinvention over the years as a pop phenomenon. Yet through it all, the band's progressive spirit shines. Early masterpieces like Foxtrot and The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway are prog in a structurally complex fashion, yet 80s albums like Invisible Touch, Duke, Abracab, and particularly the 1983 self-titled effort all brim with creativity. Phil Collins' takeover of lead vocals from Peter Gabriel may have eased this transition from prog to pop, yet the legacy of Genesis as a whole remains intrinsically linked with the genre's legacy, then, now, and forever. Tonight, tonight, Where were you the first time prog rock took hold and didn't let go? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.